no matter where you are. You are never out of his reach. No matter what the trial may be, God is able to see you through. Hello and welcome to Testimony Tuesdays. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're Hightower Ministries and we're so glad you're with us today. We have a very special guest with us today. Our guest is a highly respected seasoned prophetess and teacher of the word. She has written incredible books that are tools for the body of Christ in these end times, including the Deborah Company, Dreams and Visions, and two that we'll be discussing this evening is Discernment, the essential guide to hearing the voice of God, declarations for breakthrough, agreeing with the voice of God. That's right. So together we'll be sharing what the Lord has put on our hearts for the upcoming year and talking about prayer strategies for the upcoming year. And we will be ministering the word of the Lord and praying for viewers. So be sure to comment your prayer requests. Apostle Jane, uh, along with her husband, Tom, are senior leaders of Vision Church at Christian International in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. So help us welcome, with your comments, Apostle Jane Hammond on the show with us today. Hello, Apostle Jane. We're so honored to have you with us today. We know this is going to be a great broadcast. Hi, guys. I'm thrilled to be here with you. It's always a pleasure to do this program with you. Well, I tell you, we are, we've been looking forward to this Amen. because you carry a great anointing to pour out a wealth of knowledge. And we look forward to all that the Lord will bring forth today through our time together. You know, Thank we're you. almost at the end of the year, it seems, as we are about to pass over into 2023. However, the Hebraic calendar, we've already made a crossing over into the new year of 5783. And on the Hebraic calendar, we began a new year on September the 25th, which is Rosh Hashanah, and it's the Hebraic New Year. So we feel that there is something special about the space of time that is between Rosh Hashanah and January 1st. And this is a window of time that we should be intentional about our repentance and setting things right from our past year. And we also feel this is a time to make a prophetic decree over the year ahead. And we, we need to get serious about writing the vision and making it plain. Amen. Amen. And we have to write down the scriptures that, are, that we're standing on and decree and declare um, out loud. Come on. By faith, what uh, will and will not be allowed to happen in 2023, 5783. And so this is still a time of serious decisions. And the choices that are made this year are the seeds that uh, have been sown uh, also this year. It will affect the harvest that will come quickly in the next year. So we need to sow seed quickly and we, we need to sow our time and sow our substance and sow mercy and, and love and kindness and expect a bountiful harvest in 2023. Mm -hmm. So Apostle Jane, can you share with our viewers, please, the importance of being intentional about this season of sowing naturally and sowing seed of the word during the window of time in which we're in? I think that it's always very important um, whenever we're in these crossover seasons to be sure that we're really tuning our ear to hear what heaven is saying. Um, you know, I think that as we are leaving not just the, the new year season of the Hebraic calendar, but coming into the new year season of 2023, I do think that it's always very important that you have seed in the ground. Um, I love what um, my father-in-law, Bishop Bill Hammond, has always said. He said, you know what, if, uh, if you plant seed, if you plant corn, you're going to get a return of what? Corn. If you plant wheat, you're going to get a return of what? Wheat. If you plant nothing, what are you going to get a return of? And people always say nothing, but that's not true. What you're going to get a return of is weeds, okay? <laughs> so, uh. Make sure is that you're plowing the ground, you're planting the ground, you're watering the seed. Um, and I believe that that goes for, as you've said, financial seed. But, you know, we actually water the seed of the word within mm. our life by what our mouths say. Yeah. Job chapter 22, verse 28 says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. So light will shine 
on your way. And I love the way that it says it in Psalms uh, chapter 82, verse 10 in um, the Passion Translation. It says, open your mouth with a mighty decree. I will fulfill it now. You'll see the words that you speak, so shall it be. And so mm. we have to understand that God is looking at us, what we're saying, what we're decreeing, what we're coming into agreement with. And even when you're planting those financial seeds, you know, we've got to learn to speak to the seed. We've got to learn to declare over the seed so that it will produce the harvest that God has called the seed to produce. And so we're believing for a harvest of souls. We're believing for a harvest of finances. We're believing for a harvest of righteousness. And we're believing for a spirit of breakthrough to come in this new year, in this new season. And it's very important that we intentionally are speaking into the atmosphere those very things that literally seed the heavens and mm -hmm. open the heavens to cause rain to fall upon the ground of our lives. Amen. Amen. You know, each letter of the Hebraic alphabet has a numeric value and they and they have meaning. And, and many in the body of Christ are familiar with that. Um, you know, when we look at 5783 in short, we find that five, it stands for grace. And it also stands for the fivefold ministry. We know that 1000 refers to the millennial. Uh, you know, seven, 700, uh, you know, the way that, that uh, we looked it up and the way we understand it is, you know, we can find that it can mean sin versus a faithful remnant. Uh, there's, you know, the, the, you, there's a just a contrast there, uh, you know, to mark or, or sign something like as in Ezekiel chapter nine, the Lord in this time is marking and sealing his people. Mm -hmm. We know that seven alone means a sword. It, it, it also means wars, even wars over food. Mm -hmm. uh, in 80, we understand that is the, it's the decade of the mouth. It's the house of, of God, you know, the mouth and the house of God mm -hmm. as well. Um, Apostle Jane, can you please share with the viewers what the Lord has revealed to you concerning 5783 and what the three means in this coming year? You know, I think that um, when you look at it, it is the year of pay gamel. And pay is, as you said, it is the word about your mouth, your voice, the sound that you create that's coming out of your mouth, that's coming out of your voice. And so, again, that's where we become very intentional about the sound that we're making. But then the three is the word gamel. And gamel in the Hebrew language is um, a picture of a man that is kind of stooped over and in a position of need. And the gamel is this wealthy benefactor that chases this needy person down and bestows um, abundant blessings upon that individual. So I mm. think every one of us can see ourselves as that character as that Gamel character receiving from the Lord, from the wealthy benefactor who is our Lord um, and receiving the abundance of blessings that he is pouring out upon us during this season. But I also want us to be challenged to see ourselves as Gamel that we're going out and we're looking for those that are bowed over by the pressures of life, by sickness, by disease, by poverty, by the things that life would come to try to heap over people, to try to create desperate need. And so we become God's ambassadors. We become the gamel that chases those people down to bestow the blessings of the kingdom of heaven over them. Jesus said, as you go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he instructs us, he says, uh, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopard. Surely you have received freely, you have received freely give. And so we have to understand that not only are, are we the recipients of God's gamel, God's tracking us down with abundant blessing, but we are also the gamel that brings heaven's resource into the earth. If you will, the word gamel is also that picture of a camel um, that carries the abundant supply from far off lands. And so we are in the Gamel season. Um, I think it's very interesting that when you look up, I think it's the number 2023 on um, in Hebrew and the Hebrew concordance, the word, the number 2023, when you look it up, it actually means lavish supply. And so mm -hmm. I 
believe that this is going to be a remarkable year. As much as things are shaking in the earth, I do believe that it's going to be a year of lavish and abundant supply for God's people. Amen. Amen. You know, because our God owns the camel on a thousand hills. That's right. And, he's, and he said in Haggai 2, 4, verse 9, Yet be, now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son yeah. of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land saith That's the Lord, right. and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. That's and exactly. you know, according to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. Yeah, for so thus good. saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, this picture of the Lord running unto us, not only to give us what, what is needed uh, in the natural, but to give us wisdom. I believe God's going to be giving us wisdom on how to obtain what we need. He also is running after us to give us healing, give us anointing and um, potential, you know, with knowledge and favor. Amen. Right. Amen. You know, the number three represents, and you know, it, it, it also, like you were saying, it represents the camel, but it also is, a, it represents a bridge and it also stands for the weaning, you know, in the camel, uh, which is very interesting because the camel relates to talking, taking a journey or being on a journey with the Lord. And it also represents the angel of death. Mm. Um, you know, and, and we understand that there is more things coming to Amen. this world. That's right. um, the bridge, you know, he is, he is our connecting force. Amen. And, and when you think about the weaning, you know, it, it's, it's independence. It's, it's time for the church to grow up in the word. And in obedience to God and grow up to full maturity in the nine fruits of the spirit, a flowing with the Holy Spirit in the nine gifts of the spirit. You know, it, it's time to get our house in order because justice and and restitution is is coming into God, to God's people. Amen. Justice and restitution. And something we can't miss tonight to Apostle Jane is that, you know, we this is a time we've just ended the 50th Jubilee. And it's it is the Jubilee of Jubilees that you know it's it stands for we're stepping into a new cycle. And this year of 5783 or 20 2023 is the first year in this new cycle. And we're gonna see a, a conclusion of what has been taking place not only over the last seven years, but I believe over the last 50 years of Shemitah. And we will see a conclusion of many things and the overturning of evil back to righteousness. And, um, you know, I was telling you before we started tonight that I wanted to share a dream with you. I wanted to share a couple things and encourage the viewers. So I'm going to do that right now because I want to encourage some viewers. You know, many of you, instead of feeling that you are you've been moving forward, you feel like you have been stripped down and you've been moving backwards or maybe even made to, uh, to sit idle. You know, so. You, we, a lot of people are saying, what is going on? They've been asking what's going on. And you know, the Lord has offloaded your camel. And, and the reason why you have been feeling pressed on every side coming out of this last season is because you are passing through the eye of the needle. The eye of the Lord has been on you and the whole body of Christ. And only the true brethren, the true remnant that are walking with the Lord and led of the Holy Spirit will make it through the eye of the needle. And it is a straight and narrow path that we're on. And this is no time to be backsliding or falling asleep or falling away from the Lord. It is time to this time is a commodity. Mm -hmm. And we've got to remember that straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And few there be that find it. And the Lord will load your camel back up on the other side of this, that is coming through. And with not only what you had before, but you're this pressing through the eye of the needle, but you will, he's going to load you up with new revelations, more anointed, more wisdom to obtain wealth and resources and gifts things to equip you as he sends you forth from there. So keep being led of the Holy Spirit. We want to encourage you. Keep moving ahead toward the things that God has called you to do. Things will surely open up this year and this coming year, and you're going to find yourself walking in a greater authority in, as you're moving ahead. You know, the Lord showed me a dream. Mm -hmm. 
he given me a dream about a bridge right. and we've discussed this quite a bit and um because it, uh, we were driving over this bridge i wanted to tell you about this apostle uh you know that we were driving over this bridge to get to the other side and and we were in this heavy thick a fog and it was it was so bad that I mean there was barely barely any visibility and the lord said for us to stay awake because a lot of times when you're driving through fog it'll lull you to sleep it'll lull you to sleep and the lord said in my dream he said stay awake and help each other to stay awake and keep folks focusing ahead as you're going after driving about two thirds across this bridge, mm -hmm. we drove right out of the fog and, and we were, we were uh, still crossing over the bridge to get to the other side. But if, if this bridge was representative of the year ahead, which we believe it is, then we will, we will uh, need to keep pressing as the body of Christ. You've got to keep pressing in, even though you can't see clearly what God is doing and you can't figure out what he's doing right now. God is saying, keep pressing forward, keep moving forward and keep going into th that direction because you're going to drive out of this cloudiness around the time frame about May and May or June. If this is representative of the year, we're going to come into a time of great clarity will come to the body of Christ. And from that time through the rest of the year, we're going to be walking in great clarity. Um, we, we are, we are in a very special time, for, you know, it's prophetically speaking, as we're talking about making sure that we're decreeing and declaring in this season and write down your vision and make it, and make it plain. This is time to write it down, make it plain, decree and declare it. And don't say anything, but what God has said to you, we've got to, we got to take our, our decisions very serious mm -hmm. because the choices that you've made this year and the choices that you're still making right now are going to affect your harvests that come into this next year. We and it's going to it's going to affect you quickly. So so quickly, so your time, so in your substance, so in mercy and love, and and be looking for a bountiful harvest. Amen. You know the one more thing when we were in prayer corporate prayer yesterday, I had a vision of the Lord taking a big rug and shaking out the rug. He shook out the rug. And as he did, I heard the Lord say, watch and see where each one lands after the shaking. Mm. So we are in a very serious time and we need to pay attention mm -hmm. to where people are landing. Are they landing on the side of truth? Are they landing in a side of compromise? Are they landing in sin? Are they landing in the, on the, in the straight way with the Lord? Amen. Amen. So, um, so what have you heard, Apostle Jane? And what are you what are you thinking about what I just said? I want to give this baton back to you for 2023. Well, you know, I, I think that the dream is very interesting because I do think that um, even in talking with a lot of prophetic people, I think that it's been a season to press through the cloud of confusion. Of course, I, I do believe that we're really in the season of Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 3. Um, of course, later on in that chapter, you read about the camels. Okay, so if people are reading Isaiah 60, they'll see the camels there. But it starts out by saying, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. But then verse 2 says, For darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people. And I think that's that fog that you are seeing in the midst of your dream. But then verse 3 is the good news. It says, For the Lord will rise on you and his glory will be seen on you, then the nations will come to your light. Speaking of the church, I believe, speaking of, I know that it's referring to Israel, but I believe that it's speaking of the church, speaking of God's people. It says, then the nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. And so it's always amazing to me that God loves to shine out of darkness. He loves Amen. to shine light. And even just a little bitty, tiny bit of light drives out a whole lot of darkness. I think that it's very interesting and something that I've really been meditating on as we're coming into this new season is again, like you were talking about the number three, and we focused a little bit on the Hebrew um, Gamel, but um, over and over, I just keep hearing the Lord saying, we're coming into the third day. We're coming into the third day. And I know that, you know, we are um, in the midst of the third reformation of the church, the first reformation reform me to um, re reform means to change. It means to um, it means to to bring back to the original form. Um, and so 
um, in uh, um, with Reformation, the first one happened when Jesus came. He changed everything about how we related to God. No longer was it acceptable to bring um, a sin offering uh, and shed the blood of, uh, of, a, of a lamb or to shed the blood of, of some other animal to cover your sin. It was okay one day, but after Jesus died, he changed the whole way that we related to God. So that was the first reformation, the first change in how we relate to God. The second reformation happened in the 1500s when all that had been known as Christianity to that point um, was known as the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church became so religious and so caught up in corruption and all things that Martin Luther nailed the 95 Thesis to the door of the Wittenberg Church and he declared the just shall live by faith and it launched into the Protestant Reformation. Some of your viewers may not be familiar that the word Protestant comes from the root word protester. So they were protesting the ungodliness and the corruption and the way that the church had lost the meaning and lost the message. So reform had to happen in order for the church to be who God had called the church to be. Mm -hmm. The third reformation that we are currently in right now is that God is raising up a church that when Jesus said, I will build my church in Matthew chapter 16, he didn't use the word for religious assembly, but instead he used a governmental term, ecclesia. I will build my ecclesia mm -hmm. and the gates of hell will not prevail against the ecclesia. So here in this third day, I believe that we're seeing a reformation. Um, that ecclesia was a Roman and Greek governmental term. It means called out ones. So we know that we've been called out of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. But in the, the day that Jesus lived, he knew that the ecclesia was actually the Greek and Roman Senate. Those called out from the general population to form a legislative body that made rules and legislated what went on in the land. So this is where Jesus taught us. He said, pray this way, pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a legislative prayer. So the ecclesia is rising. And I believe that we're in this third day of great awakening. We had the first great awakening. We've had the second great awakening. And awakenings happen during times of great darkness. We're in the third day. We're, we're in, in the years of the third day. We're in the season of the third day. But I think it's so special that we're coming into the third year. So let me read you Hosea chapter 6 verse 2 says, On the third day, he, God will raise us up that we may live in his sight. On the third day, God will raise us up that we may live in his sight. And of course, we know that was prophetically speaking about the resurrection of Christ on the third day. But when you actually start going through the scripture and you start pulling out the different third days, there's so many different times when God brought deliverance, when God brought freedom. Abraham sacrificed Isaac on the third day, went up to sacrifice him. God provided a ram. That's such a picture of what God did with Jesus. But he raised him up and he said, now I know. He was willing to lay down everything. He was willing to sacrifice everything to lay his prophetic promise, Isaac, on the altar and to say, God, I give it all to you. And I think that's the season that we've been in. But it says on the third day, God provided the ram in the thicket. And I just believe that there's some people that have been looking for God's provision in the midst of some very difficult times. And God's been saying, I've been looking for your heart. I've been looking for your dedication. I've been looking to find out, do you love your prophetic promise more than you love me? Mm. Come on. That's the third day. God raised him up in that third day. And he said, now mm. I know it was on the third day that God <laughs> down on Mount Sinai and met with uh, and met with Moses and began to speak to him about his plan. It was on the third day that Jonah got delivered out of the belly of the beast, okay? And he and the prophet went and he spoke and he did the things that God had called him to do. Listen for prophets to do the hard thing in this next season of time. But what resulted out of Jonah's word was a revival that came to Nineveh. Come on, Nineveh, the most wicked city on earth, actually experienced a revival because on the third day, Jonah got on about God's business and did what God called him to do. Jesus manifested his very first miracle at the wedding of Cana. And we have to understand this. 
Weddings back then weren't the hour, hour long ceremony and a little dinner afterwards. <laughs> Weddings back then lasted for days. And yeah. it says on the third day, Jesus turned water into wine. And I think that we're going to see miracles, signs and wonders. I think we're going to see the ordinary turn to the extraordinary. That's what happened when he turned water into wine. And we learned to put a demand on the anointing. There's so many third days, but I want to focus on one last one. Esther chapter five, verse one, Esther comes before the king and the king stretches out his favor and stretches out his scepter of favor over her. And he says, ask what it is that you want. And this happened on the third day. And I want you to know that there's an Esther church that's rising up. There's an, see, when we read the book of Esther, let me just say this, June of last year, the Lord said to me, um, you've entered into the time of the hanging of Haman's 10 sons. How's that for a word? Okay. Wow. Praise God. And so, of course, we come to the book of Esther and we see the whole story of Haman. And I do want to be very clear that his name is Haman, not Haman. Okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> my name. Okay. Don't use my name. That was um, but we see this whole drama play out where Haman wrote decrees of death and destruction against God's people and <clears throat> get involved with the process. Now, for those of you that have read the book of Esther, um, like it is some Cinderella story of uh, a young orphan girl that marries the mighty king of the empire, I want to dissuade you. That is not what the book is about. It is not a Cinderella story in the slightest, okay? But what it is a book about, it is about the modern ecclesia, the modern church that God is raising up, that has been through the process of purification, been through the process of dying to self, been through the process of saying, if I perish, I perish, and the process of knowing how to be obedient, to go before the throne of the king and to wait for his favor to come, to not just for our own personal favor, but to see a nation and a generation absolutely transformed. Now, Bill and Carol, let me say this. Mm. I believe when God said that to me about, about Haman's 10 sons, I'll touch on that in just a minute. But you know, in Esther chapter one, I just went back and I read it again. Because Esther chapter one talks about the queen that was there before Esther. Her name was Vashti. Mm -hmm. And see, I believe that there is a, there that the crown is coming off of Vashti. Who is Vashti? Vashti is that casual, comfortable Christianity that could care less if it's in the presence of the king. Mm -hmm. Whew. Come, Come on. on. It's that, it's that, that place that has a form, but no power. It's it's that 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 church that wears the name Christianity, but doesn't even believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life, the only That's way. Right. The Father, that's it's that that wears the name Christian, but it doesn't bear any resemblance to it. See, I believe the crown is coming off the Vashti church and God is crowning the Esther church full of favor, full of power, full of the decree of the Lord that will actually turn things around. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're coming into that season. So when Esther went before the king, it wasn't to say, king, bless me. It was because she was on assignment. She had a mission. She understood that that nations were hanging in the balance in that season of time that her own people were hanging in the balance. And if you'll read the story, it actually says that she went before the king in chapter five. God granted her request. And, and you, have to, you have to go back and read it. But God eventually exposed Haman's plan in chapter seven. Now, here what here's what's so interesting about this: five, seven, eight, three. If you go look up that number in the Strong's Concordance in the Hebrew, you'll find that five, seven, eight, three is a Hebrew word. Er, kind of sounds like the roar of a lion. Er, okay, <laughs> and <laughs> it actually means to lay bare and to expose. I believe wow. that God is going to expose corruption. God is going to expose wickedness. God's going to expose our own hearts. God's <laughs> going to expose the things that need to come to the surface so that God can deal with it and bring us forth as that purified Esther church that's ready to say, if I perish, I perish, but I've, I've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. And so in chapter seven of Esther, we see that Haman's plot gets exposed. He actually gets hung on the very gallows that he prepared to hang the Jews on. 
So see, I believe that we're coming into this time where God has given the enemy enough rope to hang himself. Come on. Some of you have been out there saying, where is the justice? Where is the exposure? Where is all this corruption that's going on? Why isn't somebody exposing? I am telling you, the time is coming that God is going to deal with Haman. And yes. God has given them enough rope to hang them. God's going to cause them to be ensnared by the words of their own mouth. And I believe that this is in the spirit as well as some things naturally that we're going to see. But here's where I think it's very important. In Esther chapter 8, Esther goes back before the king and she goes and the king says, listen, Esther, Haman's already dead. What is it? What more do you want? I have given you the house of Haman. This is so important. Listen, he gave her Haman's house. You know what that is? That is a wealth transfer from the from the hands of the wicked to the hands of the just. Come yes, on. Lord. Haman was going to try to wipe out all of God's people. But the king said, I've given you the house of Haman. It didn't just mean he'd given him her, his family. No, 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 no. Haman was the second most important man in the entire Persian empire. He was wealthy. He was rich. He had houses. He had estates. He had lands. He had wealth and abundance. And the king said to her, I've given you the house of Haman. So there was a wealth transfer and a power transfer that gave her an authority in the land. A woman, ha. Huh? An authority in the land. Come on. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sure. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. <laughs> wow. What else? Praise God. So what else is it that you want, Esther? And she said, well, you know what? Haman's dead, but his decree isn't dead. Mm. This decree about destroying all of my people is still in place. And so here's what the king said to her. Esther chapter 8, verse 8. You yourself write a new decree. Write it in the king's name, seal it with the king's signet ring, because whatever you write in the king's name cannot be reversed. Hallelujah. See, uh, we're in a time where God is listening to the words of our mouth. And I think that we literally need to get a, a pen and paper and we need to write some decrees, not just so that we read them, but so that we speak them out loud out of our mouths. Because yes. God's listening to the things that we say. And you know what Esther and Mordecai wrote? They wrote a decree that authorized the people, the Jewish people in the land of that day to have the authority to fight back against any enemy that came to destroy. Praise God. See, the Haman uh, was called, he was identified as an Agagite. And mm -hmm. an Agag was the king of the Amalekites. The Amalekites were a tribe. Their name means plunderer or robber. So, so, so Haman came to try to cut off a nation and a generation, but the devil's been robbing. That's what a thief does, rob, kill, and destroy. And God is saying, I am authorizing my people to fight back against the spirit of death, to fight back against the spirit of robbery, and to rise up in a new authority and to see divine reversals actually begin to shift some things. I believe we're going to see amazing divine reversals, amazing things shift. And if I can just tell you, um, you know, uh, I, I dived into this story about Esther seven years ago because I was praying in my study one day and the Lord said, it's a time for divine reversals. And, um, and the Lord just really wanted me to kind of share this tonight because he said, it's a time for divine reversals. Well, a couple of hours later, we get a call from our son. This was back in 2015. And, uh, we get a call from our son whose little boy, was born with a genetic deletion. So he had a lot of physical challenges. He was walking through a lot of different things. Uh, Bill and Carrie, you've heard this story before. Mm -hmm. um, he was almost two years old and he was dealing with some uh, some difficulties in his body. And the, do the doctor said to him, listen, um, uh, some of these complications could actually cause him to either die, I mean, it's a terrible decree, or to actually lose the use of his arm or a leg in the process. And if that happens, I won't be able to do anything about it. And so he said, because we've got to do this surgery, but the surgery had to be delayed because of some other situations. Anyway, the Lord spoke to me this morning and he says, hey, it's going to be a time of divine reversals. Tell the people of God it's a time for divine reversals. And then I get this phone call two hours later that our grandson had lost the use of his left leg. And my son calls me and he's very distraught. And he says, mom, we called the doctor 
and the doctor said, remember, I told you this could happen. I'm sorry, but his condition is irreversible. Those were the doctor's words, irreversible. Hmm. Come on, some of your viewers out there might be facing a situation that seems irreversible. <clears throat> and yet God said, it's a time for divine reversal. So we brought Lucas to our house. We prayed over him. I want you to know something. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you man, we prayed and he got healed. Nothing happened. The second day, he got worse. Mm. We prayed, we decreed, he got worse. But on the third day, come on, guys, on the third Ooh. day. Hallelujah. Jesus. He out of bed that morning, he started running around the house. And he hasn't stopped running since. And I just want to just say, there's such a miracle in this season. A third day miracle. Physical yes. manifestations are going to begin to pop. Uh, things that you've been praying for for a long time that you felt like the harder you prayed, the worse it got. I'm telling you, we're coming into that amazing third day. And I, want to, and I just want to read, I, and then I'll throw it back to you. I want to read you Esther chapter 9. Because in Esther chapter nine, it says, Haman, the son of Hamadatha, uh, the, the Agagat, the arch enemy of all the Jews, had schemed to destroy the Jews. We are, we are God's people. This is what it's talking about. He cast the lot to throw them into panic and to destroy them. That's what the enemies tried to do to the church over this last season of time. But when Queen Esther, come on, guys, we are Queen Esther. We are Queen <laughs> Esther church that's rising up in this time but when queen esther intervened with the king that's our role to intervene with the king he gave written orders this is out of the message translation he gave written orders that the evil scheme that haman had worked out should boomerang back on his own head <laughs> come on guys i'm telling you we are that's good a boomerang. We're yes. yes. The enemy threw against us, turned back on his own head. We're going to see the curse turn to a blessing. We're going to see that which the enemy meant against us for evil turned for our good. And I'll yes. tell you what happened in Esther's day. Revival broke out in the land. And people that before were wanting to kill the Jews, the fear of God fell on them and they decided they wanted to become Jews. So I'm telling you, we're in the third great awakening, a third revival, the third day of favor, a third day of miracles. And the schemes of the enemy are going to boomerang back on his own head. Esther chapter nine is the is the story of the Hebraic um, festival of Purim which I think next year will happen in, I think, March. Um, but so between now and March, I just really believe that there's going to be a lot of things that are going to shift, a lot of things that are going to turn around. And in the Hebraic culture, the, the holiday of Purim is known as the holiday of reversals. And when, hallelujah, every single day can be a third day. Every single day can be resurrection life. Every single day can be your day for miracles. So that's what I believe we're coming into. And I'm very, very excited about everything God has promised for this next season. We've got to be in great that, expectation. Yeah, absolutely. It's so, that was so good. Amen. Because understanding so and discerning time is so important. And it's such an important topic because it helps us understand God's concepts of time and how they connect. You know, that's why we, we see in, in Acts uh, chapter one, verse seven, it says, and he said unto them, Jesus, it's not for you to know the times, the chronos or right. the seasons, the kairos, which the father hath put in his own power. Right. So, you know, speaking on all this uh, about Esther, can you share uh, some some time, some um, a few minutes about the differences between the times? So yeah. that people can have more of an understanding about what you're saying, how how we're going to step into these things. Um, so absolutely. So I think it's in my book on discernment. I have a book called Discernment, the Essential Guide for Hearing the Voice of God. Um, I, in there, I talk about the different words that are used for time. And really the one that's the very, very best on this is Dutch Sheets. He really does an amazing job talking about the difference between Kairos and Kronos. And, um, and it's very interesting because the Kairos time is that God ordained special 
moment, that special time, that special season that God's bringing us into that has very important spiritual ramifications. So we have these times of kairos that are the times that God just comes down. He meets with us. He brings the spirit of breakthrough. He begins to release the anointing. He begins to answer prayers. He begins to bring us into that amazing time of fulfillment. Chronos is the other word that is used for time. And chronos is the normal passage of time. That's days to weeks, weeks to months, months to years. But what we have to always understand is that God is outside of time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get frustrated in the chronos waiting for our kairos. But here's what you have to know. If you're not faithful in your chronos season, then you're never going to arrive in your kairos season. What do I mean by that? I mean your every single day walk with the Lord, paying your tithes, going to church, praying, seeking God, witnessing, doing all the disciplines, taking care of your family, going to work. You might think, well, going to work's not spiritual, but it's part of your chronos journey, your chronos mm-hmm. walk. If you're just just locking yourself in a closet waiting for a kairos moment, it's probably never going to come. Because God loves to invade our chronos with a kairos. In other words, we've got to be busy doing the chronos things so that God can come down and visit us in our kairos moment. And then there's one other word that is used. It's not really for time. It's the word hour. It's the word aura, H-O-R-A. And aura means that that moment. Okay. So like when, when we were talking about on the third day, Jesus turned water into wine. We see that his mother comes to him on the third day and she says, Jesus, they've run out of wine. And he says, woman. And I told my son, you ever call me woman. I brought you into this world. I can take you out of this world. (laughs) Somehow that was a different thing back then. Jesus says to his mom, woman, he says, what is that to do with me? My aura, my hour has not yet come. Okay. And so the very next verse, Mary turns and says, whatever he says to you, do it. And I think that there was maybe a verse that should have been in there, <laughs> okay, <laughs> where, where Jesus, where, where Mary says to Jesus, listen, I am your mother, <laughs> okay? That's right. <laughs> I am your mother, and you're going to do this for me, okay? So what Mary did is she reached into Jesus' chronos, and she pulled him into his hour. See, a lot of times we're waiting on God, and maybe God's waiting on us. Mary went in to the chronos of what Jesus was doing every single day, just going about being a good Jewish son, but she reached into the chronos and pulled him into, into his kairos or into his aura. Okay, it's like the woman that pressed through the crowd and laid hand laid hold of the hem of Jesus garment. She wasn't waiting for Jesus to come touch her. She said, you know what? I'm going after it. And so I think that there's a place where we can get stuck sometimes in the chronos, the faithfulness of every day, every day, every day. We forget to look for those Kairos opportunities. It literally means the opportune time. And I think it's beautiful because Acts chapter three, speaking about the the number three, Acts chapter three, we find Paul and uh, Peter and John at the gate beautiful. And the word beautiful is actually a word in uh, Greek, which actually means the right time or hour. So mm. see, I believe that we're coming through the gate beautiful in this year, this 2023, 5783. We're going to come through that gate beautiful, the right time, the right hour, our Kairos moment in the midst of our Kronos time. And we're going to see moments in God just begin to manifest in a powerful, powerful way. Hallelujah. That's the appointed good. time. Yeah, that's right. At the appointed time. So we encourage everyone to get a copy of Discernment, the Essential Guide to Hearing the Voice of God. Yes. This is a power packed book and on the operating of the gifts of the discerning of spirits. And uh, we will help. It will really help empower you to go to higher heights and to learn how to hear God on a greater measure. Absolutely. Amen? We did. We definitely want to take a few moments so that you can talk about your other book that we're, we're uh, speaking of tonight, and that's Declarations for Breakthrough, Agreeing with the Voice of God. Amen. Because this is an amazing tool for the body of Christ. And we just 
we just really want you to um, explain the importance of our words and how we speak. That's right. Well, I think it's very important that we have a developed prayer life, that we know how to bring our petitions, our desires, the things that we have need of before the Lord, that we have the ability to bring the hearts and the lives of our loved ones and things that other people are intercession for others before the Lord. If you will, that is our role as priest. Okay, so Jesus um, in Revelation chapter five, it said he has made us kings and priests unto our God. People have kind of used that differently and they say kind of kings or priests, but really we're kings and priests. Yes. So there, there is that place of intercession and priestly intercession where we're bringing the needs of humanity to the Lord. But then there's a kingly anointing and the kingly anointing as it comes upon us, kings made decrees. Read the book of Esther, read the book of Nehemiah, um, read the book of Daniel. All of these are kings that understood that when they decreed something, it was carried out as a law or as an edict. And so that's where we see in Job 22, 28, it says, you shall decree a thing. You shall make a, a decree. You shall issue an edict. In this in the spirit, you shall open your mouth and issue that edict in the spirit. You shall decree a thing and it will be established for you. I, I thought one day, what in the world are we supposed to be decreeing? A thing. What is a thing? So I went and I looked up what thing is in Hebrew, and it literally means you shall decree the word, you shall decree the promise, and you shall decree the prophecy. So prophecy is simply hearing what God says and saying what God says, or taking something that you've heard in a dream, in a vision. I have a book on dreams and visions to hear the voice of God in dreams and visions. Um, what you've heard God say to you personally in your prayer life, in the word, or maybe a prophecy that somebody else has spoken to you. What are you doing with those words that God has spoken? Are you just writing them in a journal and putting them on a shelf? Or do you have them recorded uh, that you can just listen to? Or are, should we be more proactive and actually decree the prophecy, Amen. decree the thing that God has said? Okay. It says in Hebrews chapter four, verse, verse two, that the word which God spoke did not profit Israel at all because they did not mix it with faith. And so you see one of the ways that we mix it with faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what we've got to understand is the way that we hear what God has spoken is for us to speak it. Okay. So taking the prophetic words, the things that you know, God has spoken over you, over your family, over your business, over your city, over your nation, and writing it into a decree that you can say. One of the things that we've been saying that came out of a dream that a, a dear friend, Gina Golston's had um, is that we've been saying America shall be saved. She had a dream where she saw an angel open up a scroll and decree, America shall be saved. And so, you know what? That has become a decree that we speak wherever we go. Different people are speaking it throughout the nation because, listen, it looks exactly opposite right now. <laughs> it looks right. like America going to hell in a handbasket. But what we've got to know is that God is listening for the voice of the ecclesia to begin to bring that divine reversal, that divine turnaround. Mm -hmm. And so we are decreeing America shall be saved. We're decreeing that over our families. My family shall be saved. We're decreeing that over different situations. And our voice literally has the power to bring the reversal every bit as much as Esther's decree brought a reversal in that season of time. Amen. <laughs> you know, and, and that really, you know, um, brings us to, in your book, you talk about uh, divine reversals and how important is it that we interrupt bad cycles um, that are in motion and that we decree divine reversals. All right. So what you have to understand is that the devil never has been and never will be an originator. Okay. He's not a creator. He's not an originator. All he is, is an imitator and a counterfeiter. So if you've got a decree over your life, such as poverty or lack or premature death or divorce or whatever it is that you feel like you're warring against that the enemy keeps decreeing over your life. What you have to know is that the only reason the enemy can decree that over you is because God 
first decreed the opposite. So if you're battling with the decree of poverty over your life, it's because God first decreed that you should prosper. If God oh, first yeah. decreed, yeah. So, so whatever God says, the enemy flips it. And then we believe what the enemy says as more true than what God says. So we've got to start getting our, our mind washed by the word. And we've got to go back to what God has said about us. And we've got to say what God says and not what the enemy says. Yeah. That is not just positive confession. That is literally making a decree. Just like Haman had a decree of death and destruction, Esther and Mordecai wrote a new decree. Some of you need to actually take a pen out and write a new decree that you can actually begin to speak over your family, your finances, your health, whatever. Amen. Amen. You know, you had wrote about the, the time of the, the dynamo and the dynamo anointing. And please tell the viewers what the dynamo anointing is and the importance it is in our lives, because we want to really pray. We want you to we want you to uh, have a few minutes to pray a corporate activation of this dynamo anointing uh, to decree that quantum leap suddenly sudden breakthroughs for the yeah. viewers today. So if you could just share a few words about the dynamo anointing so that we can uh, we can go into a, a time of corporate prayer for our viewers tonight as we're bringing this to a close. So at the beginning of 2020, as we entered into this new decade, the Lord said, woke me up in the morning, entered the decade dynamo. A dynamo is a, a power producer. Okay. It is that which produces energy and it produces power. When you study this word out, you find out that it comes from the exact same word that we get the Greek word dunamis, which is when Jesus said, you shall receive power. It is you shall receive dunamis, which is a force, might, strength, ability, miracle working power that he wants to download all of this to you. And in the book, I go through every aspect of what that dunamis means. So God was saying, listen, I have caused my Holy Spirit to indwell you so that he would become a power producer, a spiritual dynamo that as you pray, as you pray in tongues, as you, as you intercede, as you worship, as you praise, all of those things are actually acting as a generator of power, not just to charge you up, but to, so that you can then kick into gear and lay hands on the sick and cast out devils and do all the kingdom work. And so I believe that we're now in this decade of the dynamo of outpouring of incredible Holy Ghost power, unlike any other time in history that we've ever seen. And the church has got to get activated and begin to start implementing this in our everyday lives to understand we have the Holy Ghost the third member of the Godhead inside of us. And he wants to move, he wants to minister, and he wants to release his energy and his power to us and through us. Amen. Will you please take a moment, Apostle Jane, and pray for the viewers a corporate prayer to release this dynamo anointing and, and just pray your heart. Yes, Father, I thank you right now, God, that you are bringing us into unprecedented times. And unprecedented times, Lord, are going to need unprecedented grace and unprecedented power. In Acts chapter 4, Lord, when the church was being shaken, uh, it says that God gave them great grace and great power, mega dunamis and mega charis. And I thank you, Father, that in this season of time, I pray right now, God, that you would just release an impartation to every single viewer. Just lift your hands up, if you will. God, that you will release an impartation to every single viewer of mega dunamis, great power, and mega Karis, great grace to give us an ability to do things that are unprecedented. I thank you, God, that you're bringing us into our third day, God, that is filled with resurrection power, with unprecedented fruitfulness, unprecedented favor, unprecedented miracles, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, you're filling us full of the Holy Ghost and power, Lord, that is going to catapult us to a new place in the third reformation and in the third great awakening to turn this world upside down. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we These are Apostle Jane Hammond's books. You've got to get these in your spiritual toolbox. This is going to really help your spiritual growth. We've got discernment, the essential guide to hearing the, hearing the voice of God and declarations for breakthrough, agreeing with the voice of God. How can they get their copies of, of these wonderful tools? Well, you know what? Those books are available on Amazon. They're available at Christian bookstores, or you can go to janehammond.com 
or christianinternational.com and either one of those um, websites will um, be able to mail those out to you right away. They make great Christmas gifts. Um, I actually have a third book called Dreams and Visions, and I call that my revelation series. So Dreams and Visions, Discernment, and Declarations for Breakthrough, I believe would be a great addition to anybody's library that wants to press into hearing the voice of God in a clearer, and a, just like your dream, the, get the fog cleared out of the way so that we can clearly see what's ahead. Amen. Amen. And, and how can they get connected with you on Facebook and other social media outlets? What they, they can find for? on uh, on Facebook and Instagram, Apostle Jane Hammond. And uh, I will be posting a lot of different things, a lot, a lot of the word of the Lord. You can read what I felt for this year and some of the different things that I believe God is speaking to us for this next year. So um, I welcome you to be a part of my public page. And my private page is for my children and my grandchildren <laughs> so that I can walk. That's at right. Them. <laughs> but my public page, I invite you to follow me on both uh, Facebook and Instagram. Man. Well, thank you so much for being our guest. I know that our viewers have completely been blessed and we've been Absolutely. blessed to have you. It's such an honor to have you back with us today. Well, you guys do a great job and I just bless you and all your testimony Tuesdays in the coming months that are ahead. And I know God's going to bless you and pour out his anointing upon you to bring you into a double portion for this next season. Thank Amen. you so much, Apostle Jane. Thank so you appreciate very you. much. Bless Blessings. you, guys. Blessings. And we just thank you for joining us here at High Tower Ministries International for our Testimony Tuesdays broadcast. And we hope this show has edified and encouraged you in the Lord. If pastors, we're available. We'd love to be part of your conferences and your, your guest ministry schedule. You can reach us by going to bookings at hightowerministry.org. Amen. Reach out to us and share your comments with us. If you have any personal prayer requests, please send them to prayer requests at hightowerministry.org. And you can take us on the go with you. You can search us out on our podcast. We have free podcasts that go out just about anywhere you can get a podcast. You just look up High Tower Ministries podcast. That's right. And get connected with us, register with us on our website. And doing so, you'll receive a free download at hightowerministry.org. And it happens to be the first chapter of your book. And so, glory. Amen. Amen. And amen. Apostle Jane Hammond was one of my R and endorsers for That's, Unlocking she Glory. She sure was. Amen. amen. So while you're online, also look us up on YouTube and high, at High Tower Ministries International. Mm -hmm. Subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss a show. Amen. And we also have four broadcasts a week that go out right here on Facebook. Look for our Greater Glory Prophetic Teaching every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m all Eastern Standard Time, and each and every Tuesday, we have Testimony Tuesdays right here on Facebook, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard uh, Time. So we thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to share this with your friends, and until next time, be blessed. Be blessed.